Today's Ask Reddit post, those who grew up with a good father, what was the most important thing you learned from him? Oh boy, this is gonna be a good one, let's get started. Update, thanks for all the love, I never expected this kind of response. I think my dad would be amazed at how something so simple made a huge difference. Stay curious. My dad taught me to indulge my love for learning. Want to read a history of the Aztecs at 6 years old? He took me to the library and we got a real history book and he helped explain what I had a hard time reading. Want to help in the garage? He taught me all the tools and taught me how to clean them and oil them and how to use them. He always took me seriously and answered every question. He was my greatest teacher and my biggest defender and my rock. I lost him in 2003 and I have missed him every minute since then. How I raised my kids has a whole lot to do with how he raised me. Are you a scientist now? He's an Aztec. In other words, his empire is younger than a university. Holy shit. That cross post reply is legendary. You are the only person you have to live with for the rest of your life. In other words, take responsibility for what you do, learn how to move past your mistakes, and realize that your actions have consequences. My great GMA always said, wherever you go, self goes with you. Wherever you go, there you are. You can't outrun yourself. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. To kids, time equals love. Exactly. My dad was always teaching me different things and doing all kind of activities with me. I was only seeing him one weekend on two while my mom had me the rest of the time and I actually don't really remember doing anything at all with my mom besides two vacations we had together but my dad I remember he showed me how to ride a bike, do rollerblades, hiking, how to skate, skiing, gardening, going to bookstores or antique stores and more. I remember much more clearly the days me and my dad did different activities and actually spend time doing stuffs together and I still have a really good relationship with him right now. It also developed my curiosity to try new things and we still go on bike ride together once every summer even though he's 73 now and I still love gardening with him and we exchange books these days too. Edit. Woo. Thanks for my first gold colon. I'm going through a rough time in life right now and knowing this gives me a lot of hope and joy. My only worry in this world is to have a smart developed baby boy to continue to grow to a great man one day. And to always know I love him. Thank you for replying. One thing too that is important is that he was also having real conversation with me about any kind of topics. Meals together were really simple but it was never in front of the TV too compared to my mom and I still remember the food he made much more than the one my mom made. I'm sure this is one reason for that. I still ask him to make me pancakes almost every time I go visit him. It doesn't have to be complicated things but just simple stuffs that I remember and have really good memories of. Just going for ice cream too and actually sitting down to eat it and talking was so nice too. Or getting breakfast sometimes on weekends. It's the little things that counts and that I remember the most because he was consistent with it even though we didn't spend that much time together. It showed how much he cared. I'm sure you'll do a great job. I'll keep this in mind. Thank you again. Enjoy that gold. If you don't know how to make things better, just listen. Boy, was he right. Not enough people know how to do this. Because it is a hard skill. Active listening is not easy. I found out the same people who require people listening to them are really freaking bad at it. Either that or people truly want to hear standard don't worry it will get better phrases. In that case I'll just accept that I'm bad at it. Because hearing that, when I struggle instantly makes me resent the other person and as someone who struggled with depression I actively try to avoid using a phrase of this kind. Actually, I'm curious what would be the most meaningful way to respond to someone who is going through something? How do you become better at listening? I love my family and friends and I want to be someone they can come to when they're feeling down. To appreciate nature. The power of sitting in silence and looking at the night sky. Blessed are those who do not fear solitude. Who are not afraid of their own company. Who are not always desperately looking for something to do. Something to amuse themselves with. Something to judge. Paolo Carlo. Beautiful. Is this from The Alchemist? I had almost given away my copy of this book. 
I think right now is a good time for a ray read for myself. I read mine 5 times before giving it away lol. Be the vessel that introduces it to someone who needs it. When you're done rereading it, I think everyone deserves the opportunity to read that book. It was a life changer for me. My dad taught me to always be kind. Kindness isn't loud. It doesn't need to be stated. It should just be inherent in everything you do. You don't have to like everyone or treat them well if they don't treat you well. But you should try to approach everyone with the same kindness you'd wish they'd give you. Same. While it was never literally taught, he has always been a role model in how he treated me and others with kindness and empathy. Word. I only ever saw my father angry once. He had such a calm and kind temperament. If you ever feel like you have a problem, just know you can live a full happy life without alcohol. He couldn't control it, and neither could I he gave it up so he could have his son in his life. I gave it up because of his example. If it was easy, everyone would do it. This is what I have to remind myself when my job gets real tough. Everyone in my family loves to quit when the going gets tough and it's something I've really had to work hard to fight against. Respect for doing this. Breaking the cycle is not easy. I learned how to be selfless. How to feed everyone else before I sit down. How to enjoy taking care of someone. I learned how to grow vegetables. I learned how to fix a sink. Or rig something together if I need to. I learned diplomacy and patience and practicality. I learned to pay attention to what sounds my car is making. How it feels when it turns or when I let go of the wheel. I learned resilience and perseverance. I learned that I should work hard and do the best I can every time I can and that that's all I can do. He taught me responsibility and morals. Regardless of religion or politics. He taught me how to chop parsley and cook steak. How to fry potatoes for breakfast and how to slice tomatoes thin. My father is an immigrant. An engineer. A practical but sensitive and caring man. I wouldn't be who I am or have what I do without him. Everything I am or will be is owed to him. And my mother. Who is equally magnanimous. Your dad sounds like a good man. Your beautiful description of him reminds me of a Raymond Carver poem. Late fragment. And did you get what I wanted from this life? Even so, I did. And what did you want? To call myself beloved. To feel myself beloved on the earth. If it counts I learned not to emotionally and physically abuse my kids from my father. I am the man and father I am today. Because I swore I would be all things that my father was not. Responsibility, accountability and love are three things I value highly. I was literally just talking about this yesterday. The only good thing my dad provided me with was an example of everything not to do. Stay the course. I have two beautiful daughters who have turned into wonderful smart women and they have never known the pain we have suffered. I intend to. I have a 4 yo son and 9 mo daughter who are my world. Lefty loosey. Righty tighty. Edit. Holy shit my first award. I'll forward it to my dad. Thanks kind stranger. Measure twice. Cut once is what I was going to say. Yep. My dad does both woodworking and sewing and this is basically his life's motto at this point. My favorite quote came from the early 2000s. He died 11 years ago. If the way this world works ever starts to make sense to you, you need to start worrying about yourself. My dad would say that his dad told him that if things wouldn't make sense if you didn't pay attention. My dad told me that the opposite would be true by the time I grew up. Right he was. To always make your loved ones a priority. Make it your purpose. My dad worked hard to give us a comfortable life and more opportunities than most. And after what I can only assume was a long and tiring day. The first thing he'd do was sit and watch cartoons with me and my brothers while asking us about our day. And when he was forced to quit his job and decided to start up his own company. Go on for half a year without income. I can only imagine how stressful it was to be so uncertain about the future while providing for a family of six. I was slightly young but I never knew anything was wrong. He never let it show. And even though he worked probably 10 hours a day, 
He always took the time to ask me how I was doing and go to every important event with us. My dad was and is a superhero. Always will be. The next thing I'd say I learned from him was patience. Whenever he was upset with me or thought there was something up, he'd ask me about it and wait until I was done with my side before saying anything. Really made me feel heard and less worried to tell him something even when I knew it's not what he'd like to hear. Ah. To have such a father. Ah. To have a father. Ah. To have. Ah. Don't be an idiot change my life. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think. Would an idiot do that? If the answer is yes I do not do that thing. Hundreds of thousands of years of modern humanity's collective knowledge pressure packed into this absolute gem of knowledge ladies and gentlemen. Be kind. Be polite. And saying you'll be somewhere on time means 10 minutes early. That good is relative. I pretty much hated my dad growing up. We fought constantly and I thought he got off on trying to control me. It took me a long time to see how much he loved me. How much he sacrificed for me. Yep, we had some bad times. But there were good days and there were perfect moments. My dad taught me that no one is perfect. But he taught me to fight for my family. To love my family. And even if it's not perfect, it was enough. This thread means a lot to me. I see my dad in a lot of these positive comments and he passed away earlier this year. I'm just sitting here crying. Thinking about my hero. Face with big pleading eyes. I lost mine 3 years ago. He was my best friend. R.I.P. Care to share a memory? Curiosity. Just being eager to learn how stuff works. In general. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I just like to observe things and wonder things about them might sound banal but a lot of people seem to lack this. My father does the same and I started doing this lately. 21M. He would literally go and start a conversation with random group of workers in a construction site and start asking them details about what they're doing and how etc. He learned many essential skills just by observing even though he has no interest in that specific field. He just does it. And when it came in handy mostly, is when it comes to fixing something about the house. We rarely call a guide to do work for us. My father believes he can do it and he does. That confident curiosity is incredibly beneficial. Most folks like talking about their skills. All it takes is a prying mind to get them to share. My boss taught me this. By pulling over and talking NG to road bridge crews and asking good questions. Compounding interest. Dad hitting me with a 12% APR on my allowance. To always do what is honest. Never cheat. Never try and get one over on anybody. Keep your word. Show respect to everybody. Family is a priority. Time and effort. Words don't need to waste it. Don't talk for the sake of hearing your own voice. Speech is power. Use it responsibly. Especially if it involves a good pun. Education is everything. Always lend a hand if you can. Second on the don't talk just to hear your own voice. My aunt is the talker of the family. My dad is the silent one. Everyone asks why he doesn't talk more and he always answers that she does enough for all four siblings. Also, God gave him two ears and one mouth for a reason. You always leave a note and check your carbon monoxide detectors. But what about these random sticky notes in my house? Life is not about success, attaining things, status, etc. Those things have a place, but they shouldn't be your main focus. Instead, concentrate on being a better version of yourself. Grow, learn, be honest with people and be honest with yourself, which is harder emo. Cultivate real relationships with people. Take care of and be grateful for the ones you love. It's okay to fail. But it's not okay to not try. My dad taught the same but added learn how to let go of irritation. If you care about everything, you'll have a heart attack before 40 inches. We were once watching the show Survivor. And on the episode the people were flew into where they were set to be stranded. The catch was that they had to trek quite a ways to their camps. And beforehand they voted on who they thought the weakest link would be off the bat. The lady that was voted as weakest link got a ride to camp rather than having to walk. 
My dad scoffed and said screw that. I would have walked anyway to prove them all wrong. Simple. But it has stuck with me ever since. Wait he was saying he'd waste time and energy just to prove some strangers wrong. Instead of playing smart and doing what's best for himself? Or am I interpreting this wrong? In the context of a survival game I understand you. But I think for me it's about more than that. Easier to be lazy. Especially when others expect it from you. Then hold up the personal standards you should carry for yourself. He taught me to love nature and animals. He taught me not to waste my time on liars and idiots. He taught me how to change a tire. He taught me unconditional love. I was a bit of a duck up as a teenager and he was always there to tow my car. Drive me to the airport and give me a big hug whenever I needed it. And most of all. By the way he treated my mom. With love. Respect and admiration so that I recognized a good man when I saw one. Lottery tickets are a tax on people who are bad at math. One dollar or two dollars is cheap entertainment. Being able to play what if for 20 minutes while stuck in traffic. It's a bargain. I started to play my own lottery where I always win last year. I put two pounds a week into a separate bank account I opened just for the purpose and last Christmas bought myself a new TV with my winnings. It's not a life changing amount but I'd rather be sure I win something nice once a year than do what amounts to flushing my money away. You're going to disappoint offend someone no matter what you do. So if you know you're doing the right thing, don't let these people get to you. I never thought I'd have to follow his advice for him. To an extent though this can be a slippery slope for self enabling toxic behavior. Him for tearing up reading these. Y'all are so blessed you don't even know. TBH same. It really sucks that my whole childhood was ruined because of a dysfunctional dad. Like when I'd go to my friends houses and see how they interacted with their dad made me realize how good they had it and they didn't even know. It's a tough life and I just got to become the father I wished I had. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. I know a couple people with similar situations. And it's something that, honestly, I'm not sure I'd be able to get through. I'm very glad that you're becoming a good father and learning from his mistakes. If it helps any, I can actually give you a piece of advice my father has given me. If you ever find that you believe your parent, s, didn't raise you correctly, do your best to not be like them. Because if you didn't like them, chances are your spouse and eventual children won't either. So if you find something you don't like that kinda runs in your family, tell yourself it ends with me, commit to that, and eventually, it will end with you, and your children, grandchildren, and so on, will most likely never have to go through what you did. I hope I helped, even if just a little bit. Keep up the good parenting. That good men treat good women like their mama. I grew up in a house with a strong sense of family. Both my mother and my father love each other and have an amazing marriage. They have set the stage for what I look for in a relationship. My father treats my mother like an equal. You get back what you put in. I see so many unhealthy relationships and I feel incredibly fortunate to have great role models to show me what is out there. The other part of this is the good woman bit. My father has taught me how to be just that. Someone who is deserving of that love and kindness. Like I said. You get out what you put in. Any chance you are willing to elaborate on your experience of learning to be a good woman and what that entails? Weird question. But I am someone struggling with womanhood having grown up with a lack of female role models and a mother with mental illness. Emma being a good woman just means a woman that is being a good person. I do have kids you are a good mother. If you're married you're a good wife. If you're employed, you are a good employee. If you are an employer, you treat your employees well. There's not a trick to being good. Treat others the way you expect to be treated. I think that extends to everything we do. From working to parenting to voting. Actions speak louder than words. But remember that uttered words are still actions. Actions that you can't take back. And sometimes hurt more than a slap in the face. Never make important decisions based upon emotion. Don't let emotions run your life. Or they will ruin your life. That's a great point. 
learned how to be independent and not rely on someone else for anything, was looking for this. When I was about 17 I went on a camping trip with a few friends and the fan belt in our truck broke about 50 miles from the nearest town. We used 10 string, a hammer, and a pry bar to rig it up well enough to get us to town and ultimately home. Unfortunately, it turned out that we ruined the engine in the process. We replaced it a month or two later. But I didn't find out for another 15 years that it had to be replaced because of that camping trip. He didn't want to spoil the pride we felt from getting ourselves home. Bro, you actually watched the whole video. I'd give you a high five if I was a human. Make sure to click the like button and subscribe for more great content. See you next time.